Ukraine's finance minister Natalia Yeresko has said that she has been meeting with the embattled nation's main creditors and expects to issue one billion U.S. dollars in U.S. government-backed debt by the end of April as part of a larger IMF-backed loan package. Yeresko made the comments in an interview with Reuters before speaking to the Council on Foreign Relations in New York. Data from Ukraine's state statistics agency have shown that the country's economy contracted by 6.8 percent last year as a result of fighting between government forces and Kremlin-backed insurgents in the east of the country. The International Monetary Fund has predicted that Ukraine's economy will shrink by a further 5.5 percent this year, but potentially return to growth sometime next year. Our ultimate success will be the success of the economy. And that's why right now, the stabilization and returning to growth, eliminating corruption uh, and attracting additional investment into the country is absolutely paramount. Uh, implementing that deep and comprehensive free trade agreement, ensuring that it's not just a piece of paper, that we're walking the walk, not talking the talk. That we are, we are the new Ukraine. That we're not entering into an IMF agreement, taking the first tranche and then what? That we break those habits, we break those um, traditions, that we break that mentality that exists both outside the country and inside, and we establish a new one. Yaresko said strengthening Ukraine's banking system is key. In January, the U.S. confirmed two billion U.S. dollars in loan guarantees to help Ukraine and said it's also ready to provide up to three billion U.S. dollars in financial aid if the Ukrainian government implements reforms to combat corruption and improve the efficiency of the energy sector. Overall, greater and deeper U.S. financial support for Ukraine, because I, I, I go back, it all starts with the stability of our banking system. Nobody can function with a banking system that's not strong, and we need to strengthen that banking system now. So I, I think that the United States has multiple tools. We're, we're grateful for the things that we've received to date, um, but I think there's more that needs to be done on the real economy. Yureska also went on to refute the Kremlin's narrative of the Ukrainian government victimizing Russian speakers in the east of the country. This is not a war for territory. Russia is a very large country. It doesn't need Ukraine's territory. This is not a war about language because, frankly speaking, I'm a Ukrainian speaker and I have more problems in Ukraine than any Russian speaker will ever have. There are more people who don't understand Ukrainian than will not understand Russian. Um, it's a multilingual state, always has been and, and will continue to be. This is a war of principles. This is a war based on the fact that the Ukrainian people sacrifice their lives to choose a European future, not European Union membership. They died for European values, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom of religion. Ukraine says Yureska is working to rebuild confidence in the economy as it struggles against Russian-backed militants in its east. The situation, I think, is one of convincing the Kremlin that this is not worth it. This is not worth it. They are better off with a healthy, vibrant, free Ukraine than they are with an ongoing war bringing uh, you know, trucks back with, with their soldiers. Uh, and I think that's why the sanctions are important. I think that's why the transatlantic partnership being strong and united is important. I think it's important that we continue to say this is unacceptable and raise the price so that the, he has the so-called off-ramp so that this ends peacefully. The IMF is among several international lenders who have stepped in to help Ukraine as the central bank fights soaring inflation, dwindling foreign currency reserves and high capital flight.